In this video, we'll be discussing how to read a complex MSESE wiring diagram. This is a complex wiring diagram that shows a DC load, a battery, and a photovoltaic module wired up through a charge controller. So the photovoltaic module and the charge controller are not pictured here, but they would be on the MSESE. Remember, a charge controller controls the charging and discharging of a battery. It will disconnect the battery from the load if its state of charge is too low. It will also slow down the rate of charge from a source such as a photovoltaic module if the state of charge is too high. You can see that the load, battery, and PV module are hooked up to the charge controller in much the same way. In the bottom of the picture is the layout of the control panel of the MSESE. The positive terminal of the DC load is connected to the positive terminal of the load connection on the charge controller too. We could have connected the negative terminal in exactly the same way. However, since we want to measure the current to the DC load, we have run this connection through a multimeter, thus putting the multimeter in series with the load. In much the same way, we have connected PV1 and battery 2 to the charge controller 2 terminals. With this configuration, we can monitor the current flowing to or from battery 2 to the charge controller, the current flowing from PV1 to the charge controller, and the current flow from the charge controller to DC load all at the same time. In the next segment, we will focus on how to calculate power from the current measurements. In this video, we will take what we have learned about the wiring diagram and apply it to calculate the power usage or production of each, each, each device. So the question we will be answering is, due to these readings, how much power is PV1, battery 2, and the DC load producing and or using? To do this, we have to remember that power equals amps times volts as shown in this equation. In this case, we know that all voltages are 12 volts, and negative current is current that is going to discharge the battery. Since this is the case, we know that the load current is always going to be negative, or using power, and the PV1 current is always going to be positive, because it's charging the battery or consuming power. We also know that if the battery current is negative, the battery will be producing power or discharging, and if the battery current is positive, it will be consuming power or charging. By using this information, we can calculate the power of the three components as follows. The power of PV1 is 1.3 amps times 12 volts, which gives 15.6 watts. The same can be done for the load and the battery, like so, which gives 36 watts for the load and 22.8 watts for the battery. This video should have taught you how you can calculate the power from current and voltage and how you decide whether a piece of equipment is using or producing power due to the sign of the current. In this video, we will take the method for calculating power that we learned previously and use it to calculate the efficiency of the charge controller. Efficiency in general can be thought of as output something divided by input something. In this case, it is the output power divided by the input power. This can be done with energy as well. You just have to make sure both the input and the output have the same units, which in this case are watts. In the current problem, our input power is the power of PV1 added to the po power of battery 2, which comes out to be 38.4 watts. The output power is the power of the load, or 36 watts. To calculate the efficiency, we simply take the output power and divide it by the input power. And we get 0.9375. To convert to percentage, we multiply by 100% to get 93.75. In this video, you learned about how to calculate efficiency of the charge controller using the equation efficiency equals output power over input power.
In this video, we will discuss if we data logged with a 3 multimeter configuration as shown here. The output graph of the data logging is shown here. The y axis is our multimeter measurements in amps, and the x axis is time. So here we have data logged for 8,820 seconds. The green line is the measurements that came from multimeter 3, or PV1. The blue line came from battery 2. And the red line is the current draw from the load. In the first section and last section, from which runs from t equals 0 to 5,760, and t equals 7,290 to 8,820, we see that PV1 is producing power, but the load is consuming more. Battery 2 makes up the difference between the, um, the load and PV1 to keep the load running. In the middle section, from T equals 5,760 to 7,290, the load is shut off, either by someone manually disconnecting it or because the battery charge is low, so the charge controller disconnects it. The current from the PV panel goes right into the battery with some loss from, not, from going through the charge controller. The battery current is positive now because it is charging, not discharging. In this video, we learned about how we can decipher data logging data from our 3 multimeter configuration.